Now we can begin tracing this. Let's try this, spend a couple of minutes doing this part of the work and tracing them. All right. Now, I just want you to have a feel of it, how tracing happens. Now, if you notice, let me show you how it is done. You will notice that when I start tracing, I don't even care about the, the thickness of the walls at this moment. I'll just choose one. I'll just use architecture, walls, and uh, what is the thinness I have? Let's say I use 5 inch or I use, let's say, generic. The thinness I have is this, 5 inch. So what I'll do is I'll look. Now, I just want you to have a few because you find that Revit automatically identifies the center point of things for you, the center points of the walls. So I'll just start, let's say, tracing this, this way. Now if you notice, if you notice, huh, hey, I'm actually doing a pretty lousy job at tracing at this point. I'm doing a lousy job at the, at the tracing portion of this work here simply because all I need is to be able to get the center, the core center line or the wall center line here. Can you do the same also? But speed is of the essence here. So this is what I'm doing right now. If you notice, now accuracy is not the prime concern at this point. Speed is. Because we will have tools to fix things up later. So very, very quickly, you just need to make sure your alignment, your position is correct. But it can be totally inaccurate like that. So can we quickly spend some time and get this part of the work, say, done like that. See? Notice my tracing job is done already. This is how Revit should work. You should develop a habit for doing, for using it this way. The whole purpose of this exercise is to force you to break away from some of your habits when you are using AutoCAD. I know that when it comes to AutoCAD, we are very, very particular about telling you, hey, look, You've got to draw precisely, you've got to snap this, you've got to middle snap that, you've got to trim, cut carefully and so on. But when it comes to working in Revit, it's the complete opposite. We just tell you, hey, chop, chop, quickly, just lay it down and get it out. I don't even care whether you get it accurately or not. That's the thing. The whole idea of doing this is to make sure, you just make sure you lay the information there and that's it, you know, for now. Alright? Because now we will move on to the second stage. After you have created this mess, right, you can clean it up. So how do we do this? We click on modify now. Remember in the previous lesson, hey, you pick up this one, right? Trim and extend to corner. So you can use trim and extend to corner to mop up the main areas first, yeah? Like that, let's say. So this one command here can clean up quite a, quite a lot of mess from this area like that. So if you look at this now, this is largely clean up on the outside. Next, I want to introduce to you the second tool here called Trim. Trim slash extend multiple elements. That means once you select that point of reference, the rest can, you can clean them and mop them continuously. How do we do this? If you look at this, hey, I got a mess down here. Okay, all these all overshot. I can't have this. I gotta clean it up. So I'm gonna click on this, extend trim multiple elements. I'll just select this reference one and then I can clean them one shot this way. Okay, one more time. Huh? Let me just repeat this command again. It's called trim extend multiple elements. This one. This icon down here. This one. So once you clean this, once you select this already, you select the, the knife. So this is the reference object which is the knife. So you click on that one, it will cut everything away. 
That's one. But when you do that, you need to tell Revit A, which site do you want to preserve? If I now click on this site, okay, if I click on this portion here, it will trim away this one. Alright? For example, if I click on here, it's going to cut away this one. But if I click on here, though, however, it's going to cut away these. So that's the idea. So if I now select this, it will trim, trim, trim these away. Right? And then I can repeat this command again. Okay, go back, select this again this time round, and then we can clean these up. Same thing, I select these, I will be able to clean these up. And trim, and trim. And trim. And trim these away. And trim. Notice I can, uh, while doing this part of the work, because you only need one hand on the mouse at this point. And that will do the job mainly. Okay. And command by pressing escape key twice. Get into the habit. Press double escape to end the command. Like that. So if you now look at this, I will show you very quickly when you are handling a situation where you have things going above and underneath, your scene is going to get quite messy. And you know you need to know it's like 3D Studio Max. When things go really messy, you have a web of things. You must know what you want to hide away, what you want to preserve. So I will introduce to you a new tool here. Select the underlying drawing, the link drawing here, and click on the sunglasses here. This is called temporary hide and isolate. And click on hide element. Once you click on the hide element here, you will be able to check whether or not you are tracing, you have done a proper job yet. Now, what you need to pay attention to though in the user interface, you will find that along the viewport here, along the view screen, you will now see that there is a cyan box indicating to you, hey, there is something being concealed away within this scene itself, within this particular viewport. Please take note and don't forget about it. Alright? After I've checked this and I think, okay, I've done quite a proper job already, I can reset it. I can reset by, by thawing everything. So I'm going to click on this one again, the sunglasses icon here, and I can click reset. Temporary hide and isolate. As you start doing work right now, you will find that you will be using this quite a fair bit. You will need to hide things, you will need to review things, and you will need to isolate things as well. So click on this. Temporary hide and isolate. If you want to hide and thaw, Please pay attention and look at the look at the sunglasses. The sunglasses is the is the thing that I remember because of the icon here. All right. Once you click on this, if you never select anything, nothing will happen. You will not you will not highlight anything. That means you must first of all select something, and then you click on this. Do you now see, even though I selected only one element, there are four choices down here. First of all, choice number one is this, isolate category. Second choice, hide category. Third choice, isolate element. Fourth choice, hide element. Now, two on a category, two on element. What does these things mean, really? Let me show you 
what the difference are. All right. Down here, I have one door type. Um, need to load another one. For example, uh, now let me show you what the differences are. These, these two items here that I've highlighted are what we call the category of doors. All right, but this door here is one element. This door here is another element. Okay, make sense? Now, if I select this one door and I click on the sunglasses and I say hide category, what's going to happen is it will hide all the doors away. Like that. No doors. However, if I select this door again, if I click on the sign glass and I say hide element, only this one item here gets hidden away. It affects only one element and not an entire category. That's the difference. So therefore, Therefore, I will just select this, this underlying drawing, this link cat file, and I just use height element here. Next, what we can do is we can reset this. Pay attention to the cyan box here. There is a cyan color box here that means, hey look, something is hidden here. So, you can click on the sunglasses again, this one, the temporary height and isolate. We can reset this and now we will come back up again. We can keep using this. Alright. Now, next, you find that, look, some of these walls are just simply too thin, isn't it? When this happens, we can always select these. Okay, these looks these two walls look like the big one. We can always go to the properties and change them to say 12 inch walls. Is this big enough or not? Oh, it's close, is it? Is it quite close? I think it's quite, it's pretty close on that. All right, so we can make changes this way very, very quickly like that. And then obviously we haven't added in the windows, we haven't added in the doors and so on, which we will subsequently. Yeah? The whole objective is not to make sure you finish tracing out the walls and all that. No, it is not. It's just merely introducing to you the functions. Next, on manage links, this is what I want you to see. Under the insert tab here, manage links, this part. The fact, the fact that we want you to use link cat instead of um, instead of import cat is so that when the drawings are being changed inside AutoCAD, it can be updated again using this. So if you click on manage links here, I repeat, go to insert ribbon and click on manage links you will be able to see under the CAD formats here you will see this this is the floor plan and so on alright now what you can do is you can actually unload them and click ok the drawing is gone the drawing is unloaded but it has not been deleted. It is still inside the file itself. Okay. And you can click on manage links again. 
select the same file here and you can click on Many a times your drawings or your design schemes are never quite so-called approved or confirmed or anything else. It's always ongoing making changes. But you like to build the site first, you like to do drawings first and so on. So you make changes to those things first and so on. Change the layout, change the whatever, alright, from there. And then with this, we save them. Now, what's going to happen is, after you have updated the drawings, you can actually come in here and click on Reload, and you now see that things that you have done inside AutoCAD. Hey, after I modeled out the site last week, this week I added in the layout now. See, the circles are, are my new layout. Things that I've done inside AutoCAD now, I can do and unload. I can under Manage Links here, CAD Format, do an unload and then do a reload after I have saved this file and then I will be able to now see the updated version of this of this loaded reference that I can proceed to model or to increase further detail and so on with that so again I'll just mop this up and clean it again and I'll save it again and then here I can click on manage links one more time and reload again and it will be clean again the layout changes again so we can cater to the change constantly from 2D to 3D from AutoCAD to Revit in that sense